I know this photo doesn't look much, but the diagonal line running across the centre of the photo uh, kind of grabbed my imagination, and the way the building zigzag across the photo also uh, sparked something in me. So I thought, okay, let's give it a go. Let's see if I can come up with anything. So let's get into it. <laughs> This is a small fishing port called Stace. I was walking down the hill into it and I got this photo. It was a fairly crappy photo, to be honest. I'm, I'm not very impressed. But as I said in the intro, the uh, shapes or the, or the lines made by the buildings and the little stream um, really took my imagination and I thought I would uh, have a go at turning it into a painting and I've got in uh, I th decided to do this one in procreate and I begin by um, with the sketch because this is I'm going to do it as a watercolor so when I'm doing watercolors I always begin with a sketch and I start off with this sort of doodly type approach where I'm sort of scribbling in all of these rocks and things so it's a, a very loose drawing and I'm making use of the lasso tool a lot to move things around. And as you can see, I'm not too fussed about the um, detail in the buildings or the accuracy of the drawing. And I'm sort of drawing them. I found it was easy to have the screen splitting off so I could uh, get a decent size view of the uh, buildings, then draw them um, in isolation really so I, I can't see the rest of the drawing so what happened was I was sort of drawing them and then once I got them in I was having to move them around a little bit uh, to fit in with the rest of the composition but um, once I got it all in I was really pleased with it and there we go so I'm sort of resizing that one as well because that was too big I tend tended to uh, draw them all too big and I'm really kind of liking that shape where I struggled um, with, with was um, the sort of hillside, that kind of really abstract hill. What I've done there, I've just sort of got a sort of grey wash on this the sky. I wanted it to be sort of uh, cloudy, and I'm using my own watercolour brushes for this. And then I was really brave and going in with really strong colour, and I felt that that... Um, was was the way I wanted to be. I wanted it to be a really bold, colourful painting, and then I used the eraser to lift out the buildings after I'd got those washes on. And you can see I'm sort of tidying up the top top of that building there. So that's looking quite nice, really. And uh, then I'm going in with the roofs, and I'm all, I'm looking at that almost and thinking, you know, I could have stopped. <laughs> I could have almost stopped at that, maybe done a bit of pen and ink over the uh, rocks and stones and things, and uh, that would have done it. This is obviously a painting on several layers. And I think it's at this point that I start to struggle because I've got a lot of, um, a lot more colours going on there, and I've kind of destroyed that, that zigzag almost. And um, I'm using the uh, blending brushes a lot to sort of uh, get the colour on, then sort of smudge them out there. I'm drawing in some negative uh, shapes of some uh, bracken and grasses and things. But I'm liking the sort of orange against the green. I think that's looking quite nice. Lifting out some of those stones. I do a lot of lifting out in this painting, actually. So it was a bit of an experiment because I don't normally go in with colour that bold straight away. And I'm sort of trying to mimic those, um, the the rock face there. And then I dis discovered that I'd actually painted over one of the buildings, missed it out completely. So I had to go back in and lift that out. And you can see because I was using such strong colour in the background, how it's enabled me to be really brave and go in with almost black. It isn't black, it's blue really dark blue colors for uh, the sides of those buildings and the rocks uh the rock 
are they rocks stones I keep calling them rocks and I mean stones uh, of the buildings changing the color I don't you, you the mistake would be to sort of draw the old thing in with just one color uh, but I'd, I like to vary it up and then you can see I've gone back to the blue again and I'm just sort of um, selecting the colors off of the canvas now as I'm going Drawing in these uh, rocks, still really kind of loose, not a lot of uh, detail going in there. And then I sort of put in this um, water, I guess. Drawing in those negative shapes and then kind of just sort of put in a few more um, negative shapes and then positive ones as well to sort of counterbalance it to get this sort of water effect over that with some more green so I've sort of thrown those stones into shadow then lifting them out again there's lots of lifting out going off in this painting and also I start lifting out where I haven't got an outline around anything I tried to put some uh, yellow in I'm not so sure as if it was working So at this point, I'm I'm like kind of lost. I don't really know what I'm doing, to be honest. So I go back to the buildings again and think, all right. That's, I do that a lot. You know, if I'm sort of struggling with an area in a painting, I'll go somewhere safe and start working on that while I'm thinking about what I'm going to do with um, the areas that it's this sort of central area, this mass of green that I've got. I love what I've done with the buildings. I love how they're going. But I'm really not liking this central part of the painting, which is just a big blob of green. So I'm working on the buildings, thinking about what I'm going to do. Lots of softening. Really, I love the. I, I'm really happy with these brushes that I made because they really do give you that kind of watercolor effect, and I think that I can get a more realistic watercolour effect in Procreate than I can in Art Rage, which is saying something really, because Art Rage does has, have a full set of watercolour brushes. So I'm just wondering at what point I'm going to start thinking how I'm going to um, resolve this issue with this rock face. And I think it's about now. So I start sort of lifting out uh, the dark colours by adding light colours. Uh, got some pretty vivid green stuff going off there. Quite like that. And then a sort of a purpley blue. So they sort of, you can see the bushes on the photograph. I'm sort of trying to um, get an impression of those in it a little bit. Just in the sort of middle to foreground. And then again, I'm starting to raise out some of the uh, stones. I want to make sure I keep those stones nice and, and light because that sort of leads you into the painting. Again, I, I sort of chicken away from it. And it's here we go. And then I start painting in these rock shapes. And I, at this point, I'm thinking, oh, yeah, this could work. I could uh, start looking at getting a little bit of detail into this and i think i really think if i have stopped at the beginning of the painting uh, when i just put that initial wash on i wouldn't have had to do all of this but what what you can see i'm using a lighter color so this could, could be like using gouache in uh, a conventional painting where i'm starting to put those stones in and i've led you up to those buildings at the top of the painting there softening them off in places and that, to me now, is starting to work because I'm getting this um, detail of these rocks. I keep going fiddling with something else just so I can have a, a think about what, where I'm going to go with it next. Wanted a little bit of the green putting into that uh, water. Now I'm going in with a dark colour sort of so i've got this counterbalance between these light um 
it's not really rocks, but contours in the in the uh, rock face, and then the darker darker ones to sort of balance it off again. I put a, a couple of trees in, and and I just didn't like them, so I, I decided to take them out. They're not in the photo. I just tried them to see if if I felt they added anything to it. I didn't think they did, so uh, I took them out. So lots of playing about and lots of messing with this one. Sort of just overlaying colour on top of colour on top of colour. Getting that eraser, lifting it out. See, you'd be struggling to do that with a conventional watercolour. Um, what I'm doing now, I'm putting sort of highlights on top of the rocks I, I i went in a bit bright so i just sort of uh step back a bit and and you can see now it's just sort of where the light's catching those stones i did a, a little bit of something in between those buildings and soften them right back i'm just putting sort of sunlight uh, dappled on top of those stones and i think that sort of adds a lot to it Changing and varying the colour and the shape. Now I'm putting some shadow underneath the rocks. So sort of trying to add a little bit of form to the whole thing. And then doing another sort of diagonal line that leads you up to those uh, middle buildings. So now at this point I was really chuffed and thought, okay, Let's get some dark, uh, some quite vibrant oranges on the roof of those buildings. Just to make them pop a little bit. And I suppose I'm fiddling, I'm fiddling now because uh, I know it's finished. I'm quite happy with the drawing and I'm just going in. Here we go. There's the signature going on. So that is it. That is my uh, entrance to Staith's watercolour in Procreate. A uh, bit of a challenge. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, a big thumbs up as always. Much appreciated. And if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing because I've got lots of videos like this and I would love to be sharing them with you. So hopefully, I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.